Okay, Brazil, practice and sprint qualifying. Let us look at uh, practice first, but before we do, subscribe if you're new, throw me a like if you've got a second, and let's get into this. So, we had practice, which was weird. Again, I don't really like these one practice qualification days. It's very odd. I think it's just because I'm not used to it. It's been so many years of so many practices uh, that I... I like it because of the action. You don't get a lot of time to set up your car. It really separates people who are not very good at that to people who are. Like, Lance isn't good at it, and Max Verstappen is. Very little time, and he sets up the car. In fact, there's <laughs> Verstappen didn't even set, set times on the soft tire during practice. He didn't do any, which is just crazy to me. Uh, so, yeah, there was... There's quite a few laps in there, but it didn't really feel like a lot of running. People weren't taking full advantage. Uh, there was a point in time where there was nobody on track, and then Botas was on track for like two minutes, and still nobody else was out with him. So it was, it was odd to me uh, that you would have only one practice session and do so little on it. But let's take a look at uh, some of the stuff in here. Ollie Berman, very strong. That is a representative time because he was really good in qualifying as well. Uh, people really out of place here is the is the Red Bulls. Um, they didn't look quick. They looked very slippery. They were having a uh, problem uh, on some of the bumps. It, it was the resurface is actually pretty bumpy. I was really surprised at how a completely resurfaced track still has lots of undulations and bumps in it. It's good. It doesn't look like they changed too much. They stuck with a profile. I don't know how the resurfacing went. I don't know if it was a full cut where they resurface the track and dig down six feet and do the whole profile. I think it might have just been a simple resurface, which is a bit different. Uh, okay, so as outside of that, Alex Albon, very good, and the Haas both seem to be pretty good. So that was pretty interesting. This is a video of Lewis. This is one of his laps. We will turn the sound off. And if you watch real closely, he's got the gyro cam on, but it's it's hard to tell from the gyro cam, but it's very slippery. It is rear grip, rear grip that is ha affecting everybody. It is very odd, especially on this that penultimate corner there, or uh, I don't know what the corner number it is, but it was the, the second last corner. People were almost running wide and they weren't because the back end was sliding over track limits but the front tire was staying within track limits so it was very odd to see uh, rear grip is usually not something that everybody struggles with but it is definitely here anybody who put extra power on especially in turn one was getting turn two wrong running into the grass and actually ollie got his uh, time deleted in uh, the final qualifying session but here's some of the laps from uh, laps from qualify or uh, free practice I'll drag him across the screen maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller it's hard to tell because certain people had really really long times like Lawson didn't run a medium tire didn't neither did Sonona so that was really weird and then their times were super duper they were doing long runs on a soft tire that makes no sense to me I don't really understand what they were doing maybe trying to get qualifying soft tire information and long running setup is that a thing you do? That doesn't sound like something you do. And then Max Verstappen, putting in more laps than anybody on the medium, representative laps that is, uh, but not doing very well. His average lap time was very slow. But if you look at Norris, and you look at his la only three lap times, they're about 14s to 14.5. And you look at Max Verstappen's la his last three laps, which I would say is probably his push laps, you have a 14.6, 14.5, 14.4. So, He's, and there's a 14.8 in there. So he's not that far off, if you take his fastest laps, not that far off from long running on a medium to Norris. So we will know that at least some of, probably all of the sprint and some of the race, for Stappen and Norris, their pace, race pace looks pretty good. If you look at race pace as well, uh, from the Mercedes, looked okay as well as uh, the Ferrari also looked pretty good on that race pace, especially Sainz. But uh, it's early days. We don't know exactly how much fuel they were running, but that's just some takeaways from that. Sprint qualifying. Uh, lots of weird things happened here. Well, weird weird to me, weird not necessarily with uh, with stuff that happened. Uh, where did my, where did my picture go? There it is. 
we have uh, Piastri on pole. I thought that was pretty good. The way that it worked out though was very odd because uh, for they did something different. Them and Albon did something very different. Well, how about, first of all, let's finish the rest of my notes on practice. Oh, the Merc looks terrible. We kind of went over that, but they had no grip, oversteer. It was mostly Hamilton and the ride was really poor. At the end of practice, uh, Lewis Hamilton was asking how many laps they left because he said he was in pain. Uh, that's not good. They have been in pain in that Mercedes, uh, not necessarily liter literally, figuratively for quite a while, but that uh, it did look painful drive on there. And uh, oh, Max is going to get a five place grid penalty, uh, not a 10. Some people are reporting that, but let's go back and look at this. So the actual, we'll, we'll go kind of backwards here, but the actual uh, poll was really weird because the, both the McLarens and Albon came out, they did their laps and then, but it was very, very early. Now Albon did one lap, didn't come back out. That was his only lap for the entire qualifying. And if we go find this, it was the only lap he did in, in Q3 and it was ninth. Uh, Oli Berman got his lap deleted, although his was just ahead of Albon, so he would have really only been eighth, so not that big of a deal. Great to see him in there, though. He was really well. Shows up as a as an intern driver and then just puts it into Q3. That's pretty impressive. But the, the, the pole lap, Lando Norris and Oscar Piastri, they fueled up for two laps and went and improved on an old soft tire. So everybody else, the rest of the field, came out two minutes later, three minutes later, and did one push lap, their, their out lap, one push lap, and then done. That was it. That was the rest of the field what they did. And McLaren were the only ones to come out and do two laps on a tire, the first lap being their fastest, but sacrificing track evolution, because you really want to come out with your fastest tire, highest track evolution, best push lap, that's your good lap. And through the whole session, McLaren were the only ones that could put in a banker lap because the track evolution was so high that by the, if you put in a banker lap at minute eight, by the time minute one came, that banker lap was six tenths slower. Uh, Alonso improved by eight tenths from his first lap to his second one, which were five, six minutes apart. Hamilton, same thing. Russell, same thing. There's lots of improvement there and lots of people who were faster when they ne shouldn't necessarily be. So McLaren were the only ones on track, the only ones that could put in banker laps. Uh, and their banker laps were good enough to make it through the whole way. So I thought that was really interesting. They did banker laps on both the medium and the soft. So that was really cool. And then Lando, Oscar Piastri came out, did his push lap. Did a cool down left. They actually came into the pit, stopped for a second, didn't do anything and moved on. Didn't fuel or anything like that. And then did a push lap and he improved, but Lando made some mistakes and had to pit. So it looked like potentially that Lando could have done better than Oscar. And if Lando had have only came out for one lap and his first lap that he did, and he didn't do a second lap, but only fueled up for that one lap, he would have been faster than Oscar because he would have been lower on fuel enough because they were so close. It was really kind of only like three hundredths. Yeah, 300, less than three hundredths. Uh, he could have been faster than Oscar with that one lap he put in the first if he had a little bit less fuel. So I thought that was really, really interesting. Goes to show that I think McLaren knows that they're that much faster around here. So let's uh, head back and start off from P20. So Zhao, he was two seconds off his teammate and in 20th again. I don't know why this guy is still in Formula One other than the fact that he brings probably $30 million to the team. I guess that's probably why. Lance Stroll and Fernando Alonso both looked pretty abysmal. Fernando, Fernando almost made it in, but it was, it was pretty bad. They have really fallen down the order. Esteban Ocon had car trouble. He was very unhappy with it in both practice and qualifying. He was complaining over the radio pretty much nonstop. He only did really one push lap and that was it. He was done. Uh, a stark difference to Pierre Gasly, who is in seventh. So that's a pretty big distance. I think one of the biggest distance between two teammates in the field, as well as Yuki Sonona out and Liam Lawson through. So there's another big distance, Liam Lawson in eighth, Sonona in 18th. So actually that's the same distance right there. Both those teammates very far away from each other, 
which I thought was pretty interesting. If we go through there, cloudy and the temp was low. So practice was pretty sunny and the all of spring quality was pretty cloudy and that temperature went down. And if you watched my little video that I did on the track changes, that was the big difference uh, between some of the teams being good in practice and not in qualifying uh, because those track temps really did affect everybody. Uh, track evolution was absolutely crazy and I mentioned that the only people who were able to do that were to put in banker laps with that amount of track evolution was McLaren. Their initial push lap was nine tenths faster than everybody else and the track evolution was about six tenths. So they were actually able to put banker laps in there. Everybody else, no. Charles Leclerc was really, really close to being able to do that. He was the, the next closest guy. Carlos Sainz seems like he's a little bit off on this track. Behrman, great to see him go through. Botas came 15th in that tractor of a car, which was pretty amazing. Okay, P15, 14, 13, 12, and 11, we have Botas, Colapinto, Perez, Hulkenberg, and Hamilton. Um, Colapinto was having a few issues out on track. I don't think he was as good as Alabon here. Again, we're just surprised that he's making it through. He is such a much better driver than what Williams have offered up in the past couple years uh, that it's great to see that team actually wholly moving forward instead of this weird push between one and the other. Botes, again, great to see him go through. We didn't see, expect him to be much faster than that, though. Uh, and then we had Perez, Hulkenberg, and Hamilton. All three of those, very surprised, especially Hamilton. Although his car looked particularly worse than Russell's. I don't know if Russell has the updated package now, and I think that's probably the difference. The, the Hamilton package is a newer one, and I suspect they're trying to run lower to the ground, and it doesn't look like that's really that good around here, just because of how many bumps there are, and I suspect that's what's happening. There is a particularly bad bump on one of the corners. I don't know which one it is. I want to say turn 12, because that's what people were complaining turn 12 a lot, where you have to break on the bump, but I'm not sure if that's actually what's going on. Um, and it looked like Hamilton was really struggling with rear grip, more so than Russell. So I suspect that's what's going on there. He is really good around here in a race, so as long as the track hasn't changed too much to previous years, he should be able to work his way through the field. Hulkenberg, surprise, usually he qualifies a lot better than that. Uh, oddly, Ollie Berman, who's qualifying in Q2, was really good. I think he was fourth or something like that. It was crazy. He was way up there. Uh, good to see that he has some ultimate pace there. To be able to put that through and then Perez just slow he was having the same issue that Hamilton was a lot of rear grip issues now I didn't mention this in a long time before but I can only assume the press is not getting the updates maxes so there might be some reason there why he is so far behind but again just kind of he's already put himself in that position to not be uh, anywhere near points to justify upgrades anyway um, rain was really close to coming in it's very odd to see. I didn't realize there was so much water, uh, fresh water near Sao Paulo and around there. It's like a lake district. It's crazy. It reminds me of Nova Scotia. There's so many lakes. So all the, the cells were just popping up out of nowhere and then disappearing. And then there's some mountains to the east that a big cell looked like it was coming in, but the mountains ate it just like Austria kind of does where the mountains will eat the, eat the clouds and not let it push through which is also very weird. Brazil weather is so bizarre. And Perez didn't make the line in Q2. So he went to do his lap and he was really, really far off. So I don't know if that was a Perez problem, a traffic issue, a queuing at the out lap or just something messed up by the team. Uh, but he actually came into the pits instead of doing his final lap. He was that far off not making the line. It wasn't like a Leclerc where he was 0.2 of a second from the line. And that's why he didn't make his lap. He was like, 10 seconds from the line. It was really bad. So uh, he didn't make the line. Uh, we mentioned Hamilton, Hogelberg, and Behrman. And then the top 10, Ollie Behrman, Alex Albon, Liam Lawson, Pierre Gasly, George Russell, Carlos Sainz, Max Verstappen, Charles Leclerc, Lando Norris, and Oscar Piastri. So the big standouts there, we've kind of already mentioned Pierre Gasly, Liam Lawson, and Ollie Behrman. Ollie Behrman just showed up this weekend. Magnuson's sick. Again, they didn't say with what. I guess it's just a stomach flu or something like that. But he's unwell. He's hoping to come back for the normal qualifying. If he does that qualifying, then he can do the race. If he doesn't do that qualifying, then he can't do the race. He won't be able to because you, you have to do qualifying in order to actually show up. You can't just be like, hey, I'm a driver now uh, and then do it. So you have to do the whole weekend. But the sprint, uh, Behrman's allowed to do and then do the sprint race and still allow for the other driver. Uh, he got his lap time deleted. It wasn't very good anyway. It was. This is one of those self-governing tracks. 
Brazil has been a self-governing track forever. Didn't look like any of the actual track changes changed anything. It was just the resurfacing that uh, caught people out. But Oliverman, uh, too aggressive into turn one, went off in turn two and went off in the grass. It cost him a whole second. Uh, no, an 09, 16. So actually he would have been an eighth. Uh, so he, he was he was in there, but uh, unfortunately got deleted. Alexander Albon, again, he only did that one lap. I think they'll use that as a scrub tire for something, maybe, I'm not sure. Uh, tires are a big issue here this weekend. Uh, like you can see there, he only did three laps, but he went out with the McLarens. Liam Lawson, just a great result to be perfectly honest. He trounced uh, Perez, which uh, technically Liam Lawson isn't in the best car. I would assume that Sonona has the better upgraded car. Or maybe Ricardo had the better upgraded car, so Liam Liam got that car. I'm not really sure how that works, uh, but you would have thought that both Sonona and Perez could have beat out Lawson. I suspect Lawson is a better driver than both of them, but that's just me. Uh, Pierre Gasly, this is the third weekend in a row where we've seen him be into Q3. He has the upgraded car. Esteban Ocon, not continuing with the team next year, obviously does not. Very similar to Sainz and uh, Hamilton. They're not hanging around. Although Magnussen doesn't have that car and he seems to be able to pull a lot of rabbits out of the hat. But, you know, here it is. George Russell, again, much, much more calmer lap. His rear grip seemed a lot better than Hamilton's. Uh, I still think they don't know what to do with that car because uh, that is the 10 lap old package that George is running. I assume they have some bits on the car that are a little bit newer, but it shouldn't be faster than Hamilton, both driver and car wise, if he has a newer package. So it just goes to show whatever their bits are using with that new floor aren't working. Carlos Sainz just a little bit off Charles Leclerc, just enough off to let Max Verstappen sneak through into P4. Again, that is one of the biggest gaps there. Verstappen to Perez, huge amount of difference between those two drivers. Again, we think Max probably has the better car as far as upgrades go, but sometimes that's not always great. Uh, see George and Hamilton. So Carlos Sainz, yeah, yeah, just a little bit slower. He was not, no particular reason that I saw. He just seemed a little bit uh, not be able to push the limits as Charles Leclerc was. This is, again, a sprint. We often forget that the sprint doesn't really count for that many points. So do you want to push your car to the limit and mess it up and not be able to do both the sprint race and regular qualifying tomorrow, which will ruin your Sunday as well? Or do you want to put in a calm lap, come in P5, and be able to kind of just be good i would want to be p5 in brazil i would definitely want to be on pole uh, because that as we've seen in the past that first corner becomes very hectic uh first corner first lap so i uh, wouldn't want to be there charles leclerc very quick he's one of the only drivers that had the ability to put in banker laps uh, he didn't uh, end up using them they had to go out and risk that uh, but some of the laps that he put in would have been fine all the way through. Lando, quick, just made a little mistake to let Oscar Piastri through. The biggest story that will come out tomorrow, does Oscar let Lando through for points for the championship, or does he not? I would probably say that they'll be on the horn, begging from him like they did Norris in Hungary, or yeah, was it Hungary? Can't remember. Yeah, I think it was Hungary. So that'll be interesting to see. Lots of stories to unfold there. Should be a wet time tomorrow for both the race the sprint race and the regular qualifying i will be covering both of them hopefully you'll join me i think it'll be a really fun time i'm really looking forward to brazil brazil always i can't remember the last time i was like wow brazil what a stinker i don't remember that happening so it's always been a really good race and gra glad we have a sprint here i hope we keep it forever aside from that subscribe if you're new throw me a like if you have one minute of your time and i'll see you guys tomorrow for the race and the qualifying